Hi everybody. Welcome back to putting on the cam locks. So in this video we're going to finish up riveting these cam locks up, uh, cam locks up the sides past where the engine mount is. Well, just to where the engine mount is. And then we're going to go and we're going to fill up the holes for the battery box. I'll tell you all about that. And then we will actually get to the landing gear. So for the first minute and a half you're just going to watch me do this. So we're going to do some updates. I've been promising this one for a long time. Um, hey, uh, Andrew, what's going on with your engine? Well, it's funny you should ask. Uh, the choice has been made. And, yes, I am getting Lycoming IO390. And the reason I never told anyone is because the wait time here is low. <laughs> so I got it from them. Plus, they're more or less down the street, quote-unquote. Uh, the engine's coming from Lycon. So Lycon's out of Visalia, California, just a couple hours south of us by plane. I've got a few friends that get their engines from them. Uh, we've gotten one for a club plane before, so going with them. Everything is good. They, uh, it's going to be a fire breather. I'll tell you all about it in a later video. So right now I'm doing right here, but so yeah, that's that's the thing. Engines, engines happy. It's on order. Everything's good. Okay, so. What you see me doing here, so the, um, you know I'm using EarthX batteries. So EarthX battery boxes are not the same width as the battery box that Van sends you to put the battery on. Right? No problem. You've seen me work on this before. The problem is there are holes in the firewall where the normal battery box goes. So what I am doing here is basically just riveting them shut. So I'm dimpling, from, dimpling them from the front side. Uh, you know, just dimpling them flat, and then putting a 3-3 rivet, or a very short one in, <clears throat> and riveting the hole shut. Now, once, now that's nice, and, and well and good and all, but not really 100%, you know, sealed to my pleasure, so what I will do is I will go back over with uh, tank sealant on the back side of the firewall, and just sort of put a little round on top of all those shop heads, just so that there's no leaks, right? We want this to be we want this to be tight. All right, so once I'm done with that, we're going to get to the landing gear. I know everyone's excited about the engine. Look, if you got questions about the engine, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, let me see if I got any seconds here. So it's an IO390. Uh, I'm actually getting a quote-unquote overhauled engine. It's not technically factory new because it wasn't built in a factory. However, it's built with all new parts. But because it wasn't built in a factory, they can't call it factory new. It's called an overhaul. So I'm getting an overhauled engine. Uh, it's going to have a three-year warranty on it, which is technically better than Lycoming's one. And I got a few optional extras I've added to it. So I'm going to do, you know, port and polish, like the, thunder, like the Thunderbolt. You know, port and polish the exhaust uh, valves. Better airflow. <clears throat> I'm also doing the O-ring crankcase mod. So the crankcase, instead of having silk thread, which is what they've been doing since the 1930s, this actually CNC's out a groove, and your crankcase halves or just one half, and then you can use like a silicon, silicone, you know, like almost like an RTV bead in there to seal the crankcase together. So doing that, uh, a couple of small performance issues. I'm not getting super cylinders because that's ridiculous, but so I, I do expect this to breathe a little bit of fire. So I'm very excited about that. All right, so here is the landing gear we're putting it on. Right, so we're, you, you'll notice that I am starting with the main legs. Normally the directions have you put on the front gear uh, or does it? Well, I already know the front gear goes on. That's that's pretty simple. Uh, the key to these, you can see I'm sort of jamming it in and out and looking back and forth. Uh, when they bend the solid pieces of steel, and those things are heavy, right? Those are like 25 pounds a piece. When they bend those, it causes a flare right on the outside because the material's got to go somewhere. And you see me just sanding the crap out of it. There's two areas you need to really file down to get it to fit. Because once it fits, there's another bracket that goes in there, and it squeezes the crap out of it, right? So don't you think that this thing is not going to be, you know, sturdy in place. It will be. The trick is just, you know, to not file too much. You want to file just enough so that once it's up there, it ain't moving. Because, you know, don't ever expect to take it out. Okay, so done with this one for now. In the next video, Saturday... Something really cool is happening, and we're going to keep working on these. It's, uh, that's all it is. The main gear is just filing the legs down and then shoving them up inside. So uh, have hope everyone's having a good week. Uh, thanks for joining me. See you soon.